Well, I just made a giant beam compass. The Wood Whisperer is sponsored by Typebond. Whenever I need to draw circles, I go to a compass. Something like this AccuScribe is great because it's not just a compass, but you could use it as a scribe along a wall for some kind of a cabinet install. But anyway, there is a small range of diameters you can get with a tool like this. Now, if you make something bigger in this same format, it gets a little bit clunky, kind of hard to use, and you really are limited in the sizes you can make with it. But this is pretty good for most small circles. And when you want to go a little bit bigger, you have to go to something a little bit more like this. This is a beam compass that's kind of been taken apart and salvaged for pieces, but this is what I've used in the past. You don't even need something like this. You just really need maybe a length of wood, a dowel rod, a pencil, some tape to hold it on there, and a pin on the other end, and you could really cobble something together if it's just a one-off thing. But I wanted to make a beam compass that was a little bit more like an heirloom tool. I just thought it would be a fun project, definitely overkill for what it is, but this is what I came up with. Uh, this is a beam compass inspired by an article I found on the Woodsmith magazine or the Woodsmith website that has an aluminum core it's got a walnut skin on the outside with a movable portion with the pin that slides along the shaft. Tighten it down and you can put that pin wherever you need it to be. And then on the other end, we have room for a pencil to just simply drop in and get tightened up with that knob. Very simple little system, but there's quite a bit of work that goes into it. So hopefully you enjoy watching this come together. So the first step is to cut down some walnut for the outer skins and the inner filler pieces. By the way, while I don't have a set of plans available for this, I do have my initial SketchUp model if you want to download it for your own use. The model is imperfect, but it's pretty darn close to what I actually made. The walnut skins are cut to about an eighth of an inch in thickness, and then they're drum sanded to final thickness. This is actually a pretty critical step because we need the walnut and aluminum sandwich to be the same thickness as the half inch square aluminum stock. To understand why, keep watching. Before gluing the little beam sandwich together, I'll lightly sand the aluminum to not only clean the surface, but to give the glue something to bite into. You can see that I intentionally cut the walnut skins just a little bit wider than the aluminum core. This will allow me to flush it up after the glue dries. I also used a little spacer to help keep the skins centered with an overhang on both edges. And now for the epoxy. Little known fact, epoxy can actually be used as an adhesive. Adding a high density filler gives it a little bit more strength and helps thicken it up a bit, making it stay where I put it. I then paint the epoxy onto both the walnut and the aluminum. I don't think Nicole has once touched any of my I don't know if she's intimidated by it or doesn't care. Whoa, 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 hold on, guys. I said grills. She doesn't touch my grills. This is the problem when you hire an editor that has as bad of a sense of humor as you do. Don't mean to brag, but I'm kind of a professional. The strips of plywood will help distribute the pressure along the beam, and some packing tape on the surface of the plywood helps protect it from glue squeeze out. We got them. May as well use them. The smaller strip is what we'll use to make the movable pin and the pencil holder. So they only get one strip of walnut and one strip of aluminum. We'll glue it as one big piece, and then cut it into smaller pieces later. Even with the tape in place, the calls want to stick a bit, but it's not too hard to pry them apart. Please don't break. Take it slow. Take it slow. There we go. Now we just need to flush the wood up to the aluminum. I'll use a block plane for the bulk of the removal, followed up with some sanding and scraping. At the miter saw, I've switched to a blade that's designed for non-ferrous metals. I'm using a stop block and a little auxiliary piece to ensure that I have zero clearance during the cut. And now I can cut a piece of the half-inch aluminum stock to a length that matches the width of the walnut aluminum sandwich. By the way, see all those shards of aluminum? You can't see my face here, but I'm obviously wearing safety glasses. Getting one of those pieces in your eye can really ruin your day, or your year, depending on how bad it is. Now I'm drum sanding the half-inch walnut piece so that it's the same dimension as the aluminum stock. 
Well, I just came all the way out into the woods for some reason to tell you guys about the Wood Whisperer Guild. The Wood Whisperer Guild is an online woodworking school where you can learn how to make all kinds of furniture from some of the best instructors in the business. If you're tired of incomplete plans, videos that go too fast and don't have enough detail, or you're just sick of the monthly subscriptions, you should come check us out. We even have a free course to get you started so there's no risk. Head to woodwhisperaguild.com for more info. Two of the pieces will receive knurled knobs, so I'll drill a through hole and then tap the threads. To construct the sliding pin and the pencil holder, I'll use a combination of quick drying CA glue and epoxy. The CA glue will cure quickly, helping to lock the pieces in position. Then I can apply some clamps. Now I could use epoxy and clamps alone, but it's really gonna be difficult to keep the pieces from sliding around. So this method works pretty well as I hold the pieces in position just long enough for the CA glue to set. Now watch very closely what's happening here. The aluminum is supposed to face the inside. I don't know if this happens to you, but there are times in projects where I can't see the forest for the trees, or I almost have some kind of blinders on, where I don't catch an incredibly obvious mistake like this. I'm so focused on that glue and getting these pieces positioned correctly that I completely spaced on which side was facing out. I didn't even notice it, so I just set the piece aside to cure and then moved on to the pencil holder. And look what I'm doing. I'm doing it again. Ugh, okay. Only I actually noticed this one and I was able to pull the pieces apart and then glue them back together the correct way. Okay, try that again. It looks like it's supposed to look. Okay. It wasn't until the next morning that I realized the mistake I made on the first one. Unfortunately, this one had already surrendered to the sweet embrace of the epoxy and needed to be destructively dismantled. Now I'm only gonna sacrifice one side here, so I'll try to keep the other side fully intact. I'll use whatever tools needed to clean up the glue and get this thing ready for a new side. Fortunately, I had just enough leftover walnut and aluminum to cut one new piece. And now a glue do-over. So the wood side down, no. right? Like this. Hold on. Dad, help me. Like this. <laughs> Look, you've gotta have a sense of humor about these things. Mistakes happen and nobody's perfect. Now while the epoxy cures on those pieces, I'll go back to the beam and clean up one end. On the pencil end, I'm actually intentionally leaving the wood veneer just a little bit proud so that it creates a cradle for the pencil. Chamfering the inside edges will help prevent any splintering and really give the pencil a nice home to nestle into, regardless of the pencil shape. At the disc sander, I'll proceed to destroy the sandpaper by using it to do the final shaping and leveling. Once cleaned up, I can use sandpaper on the joiner bed to work up through the grit so that there's really no visible scratch pattern on the aluminum. I need to drill a hole for the pencil so that it can be inserted from the top. To locate the hole, I'll use a pencil to make a mark and then drill a pilot hole from the inside. Then I can use a bigger bit to make the clearance hole needed for the pencil. Now I'll just add some decorative shaping to the pencil holder and the movable pin. A word of warning here, the metal can get super hot. This is exacerbated by the fact that you can't really feel how hot it is when your fingers are touching the walnut. So if you're using a power sander like this, give the piece plenty of time to cool. Really every few seconds you wanna pull it away and get it on a cold portion of the cast iron. Now this looks scarier than it is, but I'm just adding a little chamfer detail to the wood. So the truth is, I really don't know how well the epoxy and the walnut bond will fare over time. So to stack the cards in my favor, I'm drilling for 1 8 inch aluminum pins. I'm placing the holes wherever I have a decent amount of material to go through, and I'm not really concerned with the actual pattern itself. With the epoxy in the hole, I can drive the aluminum pins. And what the heck, while I'm at it, I may as well put some pins into the beam. 
Now I didn't do it on this version of the tool, but what would be a really sweet upgrade would be to place those pins maybe every inch along the length of the beam. Could be a good way to get an approximate length setting. And now I can take care of the pins in the pencil holder. All the pins are flushed up with a file and then cleaned up a little bit further with sandpaper. The movable pin piece needs a hole for the pin itself, which I can make at the drill press. And then I'll add a little bit of rounding on the top to finish it off. Once again, a light chamfer at the router table. Oh yeah, gotta flush these other pins too. To attach the pencil holder, I'll add some epoxy and clamp the thing in place, making sure that the pencil has some room to move. The knurled knob will press the pencil up against the beam, so it doesn't need to be a piston fit. After the epoxy dries, I'll add two more pins to help lock it down onto the beam. I used epoxy before, but really there's no reason that I can't use CA glue for these pins too. The pencil hole needs a little bit of love, so I'll take a few spins with a countersink bit, and that should give it a little bit more of a finished look. And speaking of finished, let's apply some finish. I'm using a tongue oil mixture here. Since filming this segment, I've really taken a liking to the all natural finishes sold by Bumble Shoots. Their wood finish is the perfect mixture of tongue oil and citrus solvent, so if you don't want to mix your own, use my code TWW10 at checkout and you can get 10% off. Now for the final assembly. And there it is. I don't know who's gonna make something like this or even who needs something like this, but my gosh, was it a lot of fun. And it's definitely gonna come in handy whenever I need these large circles, large arcs. It's gonna be a fun tool to use. Thanks for watching. I'm drawing circles! No, you're drawing a rainbow. I'm drawing rainbows.